Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's back, man. Pain in the grass. It is back, and it is huge. Huge! I mean, we got three big days. We're talking July 30th, Friday, August 2nd, Saturday, August 3rd, all happening at the White River Amphitheater. And the bands, forget about it. I oh, mean, yeah. It's a cavalcade of stars. Slipknot, Disturbed, Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson, Volbeat, and of course, great, great local performers and other national acts you may know. I mean, so many people are looking to so many different, they're looking forward to so many different bands that are coming. I was, I saw Slipknot was on Jimmy Kimmel Live. I don't know if you guys caught that, but man, they sounded great. Oh, nice. And they, they don't, they don't look scary at all. No, not at all. <laughs> they never do. No. I'm pretty pumped for the new record. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, they're going to be We are not here. your kind. Is that the name of the record? Yes. We are not your kind? Yep. Well, yeah, sometimes I look at them and I go, I'm not sure if they are. They might be right about this. Anyway, you want to go to Pain in the Grass, you know what you got to do. Get your tickets and you can get them now. Go to LiveNation.com. Let's play B. Could whack him instead. It's Whackin' Wednesday. Whack Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Woo! And Steve, I'm just going to have to say you, you already look like you've taken a whacking there. I, I've been whacked over the weekend. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. You've got the, uh, are, are they scars on your face at this point or are they just a little bit of, a uh, little bit of damage just there? Br- bad bruises. <laughs> uh, let's just say kids don't hit your friends and faces with uh, video cassettes like oh, my friend Pitfall damn, Jones might have done yeah. to me. I just finally noticed that. I, oh, yeah, I, I have, have a black eye. Oh, yo, yo, you do. Look at the scar. Look at the, like the, almost the Tyrion scar right across his face right yeah. there. Yeah, dude, that's nuts. I'll have to find the, the Hardcore. picture. The, 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 on my Twitter, if you just go to at I'm Steve Miggs, you can see the picture of how I looked at right after the match. Oh, damn, dude. Yeah, at least yeah. the swelling's gone down. Yeah. But wrestling's fake, man. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> what, what am I doing? What are you doing, man? Uh-oh. Why are you bothering Pitfall? Don't bother Pitfall. Uh, you all clearly learned that lesson, BJ. Yeah, you did. <laughs> we beat each other up for 35 minutes, and then that's how I looked afterwards. But I got to give a shout out to Jamie, an artist. Uh, she goes by uh, Batty Bat Art on Twitter. She just whipped up the greatest art rendition of what oh, I look like after the match. That is awesome. <laughs> Wrapped up in VHS tape <laughs> and with the Be Kind Rewind sticker on my forehead. Oh, that, that is, is amazing. It's pretty that's awesome. Fantastic. Well, we'll have to see if uh, Steve gets whacked right now. We've got Steve and Polsbo to take him on. Steve, are you there? It is what you call a good old-fashioned Steve-off. Yes. <laughs> Steve, are you there, buddy? He should be. I'm here. Steve. Yes. Uh, Not I'm, you, Steve. The I'm, other Steve. I do have him engaged. Yes. Oh, there yeah, he is. There he is. All right, All right sweet. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh, the other Steve playing for today? Tickets to check out. Speaking of wrestling, WWE Stomping Grounds oh, on nice. June 23rd at the Tacoma Dome. And then the next night, you get to head on over to Everett for Monday Night Raw Ooh. at the Angel of the Winds Arena. Go to KISW.com for all the details, and that's where you get the info on where you can get tickets. All right, Steve, get out of here. What was that? Huh? Will Migs be getting his butt kicked again? Yes. <laughs> Outside of the Tacoma Dome. Yeah. yeah, they won't, yeah he, he won't even get in there if he'll get no, his butt no, kicked. Someone's going to body slam me. Out hey, I put yeah. Pitfall Jones through a table, so at least I got that. Oh, you, you got that for yeah. yourself. Okay. Yeah. That was pretty awesome, actually. All right, all right Migs, get out of here. Yeah! For those playing at home, Steve will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Steve, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Whack it. What love struck Warner Brothers cartoon character often chased a black cat named Penelope. The skunk. Pepe Le Pew. Yes! What year of the early 80s did the movie Scarface come out? 82. No. 
83. Yes, the clarinet is a member of what family of instruments? Woodwinds. Yes, what war saw the use of tanks in battle for the first time? World War One. Yes, what is the leading female singer in an opera called? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Soprano. No. Pass. Glenn Quagmire is a character for, from what animated TV show? Uh, Donald Duck? No. Quagmire, Quagmire, Quagmire. Oh, jeez. Oh, pass. What book won Harper Lee a Pulitzer Prize in 1961? Gone with the Wind. No. Jeez, pass. What interstate highway connects Boston and Seattle? I-5? No. 90. Yes. yes! What decade did the television series Days of Our Lives first air? The 50s. No, and bless 60s, you, Vicky. 60s. Yes. 60s, too late, though. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, correct. All right, right down the uh, middle, Steve. Yep, yep, we'll have to see if this Steve can get above or below that. Wagmire was on Family Guy. Yep, yeah, but don't say anything. Steve's coming back in, and unfortunately, right. too late there. Can't yeah. count it. Sad yeah. day all around. I know, really, there's a couple of sad days. This Poor Steve should have a better score. Yes. Yeah, he should. He should. Yeah. But we'll have to see if this Steve yeah. in this room yeah. gets a better score. I hope so. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, yeah! What love-struck Warner Brothers cartoon character often chased a black cat named Pepe Le Pew? Yes! What year of the early 80s did the movie Scarface come out? 82. No. 81. No. 1980. No! The clarinet is a member of what family of instruments? That'd be the woodwind. Yes! What war saw the use of tanks in battle for the first time? World War I. Yes! What is the leading female singer in an opera called? Queen Bitch. (laughs) No. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) Alto? No. A soprano. No! Oh. Glenn Quagmire is a character from what Family animated Guy. TV show? Yes. What <laughs> book won Harper Lee a Pulitzer Prize in 1961? Who? What book won Harper Lee a Pulitzer Gone Prize? Gone with the Wind. No. Uh, Dianetics. No! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the path of a superior dude. No. <laughs> what, what interstate highway connects Boston and Seattle? I-90. Yes. What decade did the television series Days of Our Lives first air? 60s. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. You win. Sorry, oh. Stephen Polsbo. <laughs> all right. Six to five. Oh. All right. Sorry, Stevie. Good job, Steve. Right on, my man. Have a good day. He had you beat. He no, I, he, yeah. oh, I won. Yeah, yeah, but he missed a cut. He, he, like, he was seconds away. He, if he could have just remembered, he was... Oh, man. He had you beaten, but he, he just dropped the ball a little bit. He had the decade, yeah. but it was a little late, and then yeah. he figured out Quagmire was family guy a little oh. late. And he knew he did. He, he was he, Exactly. He, he, but he just couldn't figure it out until yeah. too late. Far too late. Yeah. Uh, does anybody know the leading female singer in an opera, what they're called? I think he does. Oh, you don't? Oh, it's a diva. False. Oh, I was going to say false. It's not a diva. It's not a diva? It's not a diva. Oh, I guess I don't know either. It's not a diva. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a diva. <laughs> Thanks. That was a better Arnold. <laughs> prima Donna. Yes, it's the prima Donna. Oh, good job, Vic. <laughs> I told you, Vicky knew. You gave me the hint. It's um, not the diva. <laughs> Just keeps that. that impression up. I'm going to drop kick him. <laughs> Huh. Just like he got drop kicked. Did you see that video? I of Arnold? did see that, but you know, it's so funny. The guy, I mean, flew into him, and Arnold was kind of like a rock. But, yeah. uh, he bounced <laughs> off him. It didn't phase Arnold. What is Arnold? Eighty? I felt like yeah, he, he's pretty close. He's old, and he's still. I think I felt a mosquito on my back. What is it? He is seventy-one. <laughs> yeah, okay, seventy-one I mean, years old, and this guy flew right into him with a uh, with a with some martial art drop kick and drop kick, and Arnold's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then whoever that dude was, that just swooped right in and just <laughs> removed the situation. Right rather quickly. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, does anybody know the book that Harper Lee uh, wrote that won a Pulitzer Prize in 61? Is it To Kill a Mockingbird? It is. Good job, it is. I, Vicky. I feel smart today. Good job. Vicky knows things. She's a prima donna. Yes, she is. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Steve. You won with six correct. I mean, it's call number six. Uh, you get a double dose of wrestling. WWE Stomping Grounds on June 23rd at the Tacoma Dome and Monday Night Raw on June 24th at Angel of the Winds Arena. Caller number six, 206-421-ROCK. Not bad. All right, finally, someone's written an article because we've asked this question so many times. How long do you have to wait before openly discussing spoilers? Okay, because I have a question about spoilers. Okay. I feel like we have a different opinion on spoilers when it comes to uh, movies, 
te- in television, obviously. But then with television, I feel like there's a split. You, you have dramatic shows, mm-hmm. and then you have comedies. And I feel like with comedies, people are less worried about spoilers than they are with them. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. Big Bang Theory, nobody's freaking out if you, like, spoil that. And that, actually, I kind of was, because somebody immediately said something to me, but you're uh-huh. right. They would never think of saying anything about Game of Thrones the day after it aired. Right. But this dude was like, because I was talking with somebody, I was talking with Rev about Game of Thrones, about the episode from last week, and this dude says, oh, you're talking about when blah, blah, blah happened, and I'm going... No, what are you? He's like, oh, that's what happened last night in Big Bang Theory. Go, thanks, I haven't watched it yet. Oh. Uh, so he, we, we weren't even talking about the show he was talking about. And for some reason, he thought, well, I'll just spoil that anyway. I think we all have to agree that you can't bring it up the next day unless someone says, I've already saw it. And you've had that mutual. you got to ask, don't you? Yeah, at least the one day on something. But I feel like on TV shows, and I'm not saying it's right, it's just free for all on TV shows because uh, it was 6.15 our time and someone posted what happened on Game of Thrones on Sunday. Oh, that's and that's only like, how would they know that? Because it only I aired. Think they, it, some people saw the leaked one. Oh, they saw the leaked one. See, that's BS. And he's like, congratulations to this, this, and this. And it's like, oh my God. And that was the last straw with this person, so I deleted him. Yeah, that's BS, dude. Because, yeah, that, that's, that's 9.15 on the East Coast. That's, I mean, that's as early as that, that show's yeah. airing. It's airing right now, 15 minutes into it, which means yeah. that person couldn't have known how it Thrones ended. Oh, dude. And this, this last, the series finale, uh, like, all bets were off. You could not be on social media because people. It wasn't even subtle. Like, they're posting memes immediately. They're just literally posting what is happening while it's going on. I'll be honest. I've been on social media a bunch, and I mean, maybe I just, I'm just i just blind to it, but I, I haven't been spoiled at all on a show that I could care less about. Maybe that's why. Yeah, that's maybe, probably why, too. I'm yeah. not on a heightened alert. So yeah. even if I see something that mentions Game of Thrones, I just keep scrolling. I don't even I don't even know. It's just a bunch of letters yeah. that start with like a D or a Y or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And for, you know, I was lucky too because I was staying at a hotel, so um, you know I didn't. You know I was getting spotty internet. Plus, I wasn't paying attention to my phone most of the weekend. So I, it just so happened that I got back to the hotel and I thought, oh hey, it's Sunday night. I wonder if they, these guys. I'm almost every hotel has HBO, and they did. And I'm like, wow, I'm going to watch this live. This is pretty wild. Nice. Yeah. So I, I literally didn't know what was going on and even forgot about it until boom, there, boom. there, there I was. There's my TV. You lucked out. And I started watching it at about six. 15 because I was able to get the Eastern feed because I was just randomly looking online and people just were tweeting things and I'm like I can't do anything right now. No you can't. can't live life. No. 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 My, most of my life is based on the internet so I've got to kind of do something with it but at that point. Some, I got, I got yeah. to have some fun with it uh, at Without a Cause Wrestling because we were rest, I was having my wrestling match on Sunday same day as Game of Thrones so in the place you know, it was full and uh, people were having a good time and so I, after my match we were cutting promos I grabbed the microphone I was about to say something Something and somebody decided to say that came at throne. So I decided to have some fun. It was a little bit of an inside joke with us because I made it a point to say nobody likes the show on the yeah. mic, and then just went down. The, actually, I think Rev has the. Do you want to hear how I oh, react to this oh, person this go? yelling yeah. Game of Thrones right before I was supposed to do a promo? Nobody watches that show. Yeah. It's fake, don't you know? I think it made sense at, at a it's wrestling fake. show to call that show fake. <laughs> That's funny. Wait, dragons aren't real? Last That's I funny. checked. But a lot of people in that crowd really agree with you that nobody watches that show. Well, obviously, we're all <laughs> watching wrestling at that oh, yeah. time. Well, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I guess that's right. You were all there. That's I picked a, the right room to say yeah, that, too. That's a good point. I forgot. That's exactly when you were doing it. So they had the survey that said, how long should we wait before openly discussing spoilers? Of course, Avengers Endgame was another one that people were really super sensitive to. And even though it's been, what, a month since that came out almost? Yes, it has been. We still probably won't say what happened in Avengers Endgame, right? We're not going to still do that. Uh, we're still going to sort to keep a moratorium on that, right? I have no idea anymore, man. I know. <laughs> I mean, if it accidentally comes out, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't like. Bad. Yeah, I wouldn't like cast blame or anything like that. But I don't think we should go out expressly trying to spoil it. Right. Well, a majority. Russell Wilson killed Thanos. Whoa, uh, Russell. A majority of the people. <laughs> hey, hey, Seattle! I killed Thanos hey, for you. Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, almost everyone thinks there should be a time limit, that's for sure. But the majority say you shouldn't expect people to wait more than a week. If you haven't watched it by then, it's your fault. There's a lot of people that are butthurt and don't agree with that. But this, this survey says the average American says, hey, you know what? If, if, if a week goes by, you can't be upset at anybody. We do that on, on uh, BJJ's Geek Nation. We'll wait a week in order to not do spoilers. But also at that point, people are actively downloading the podcast. So yeah. I think it's a little bit different on that end, too. And we're doing that on TV shows. We actually, on, the, on, on Geek Nation, we wait two weeks for movies. Mm-hmm. You and me rules. I know. Well, which I dude, understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. People, people are so butthurt. People over this. lose yeah. their Stupid. minds about uh, it. Wow. Uh, all right. So, can we talk about Big Bang Theory? Because some people are texting. Is that well, okay? Here's the problem. Have you I, not seen it? I have not seen it because oh. I'm waiting till this weekend with my you wife. Said that last week. But uh, well, no. Well, yeah. I said last week I was waiting till this weekend. You probably oh. just thought it was. That <laughs> I said Memorial Damn Day. It. But here's the thing. I don't care if you want to talk about it. No, um, it's not fun if you if you see. I just wanted to get your opinion on it. I really enjoyed the final episode. See, the, I will tell you this: the guy down the hall did not like it. He thought it was lame. Who the hell is the guy down the hall? Um, he's the guy that's in charge of uh, the sound. Oh, okay. that guy. He, now I don't know how much of a fan of that show he was in the first place. I mean, it wasn't anything spectacular, but I thought it was a really cool episode. Well, that's all you would care about. I mean, how do you end? And it was kind of refreshing that way, as, as opposed to comedies that try and do something super out of the, you know, like the Seinfeld ending or How I Met Your Mother, where it's like, okay, this is just you're trying too hard. Yeah, this one they didn't try. It didn't feel like they went overboard with the fi- finale, but it was a, a really nice way to cap off the show. Did it feel like a send off? Oh yeah, it did feel like a see you later episode. A real feel good moment with Sheldon. Oh nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I some yeah. resolution with maybe a certain thing in the the apartment complex. Oh. Oh, I wondered about that. Yes, I, that I, that that I was going to say. They had to make. They had to resolve that that whole thing. Someone even department. texted, "Hey, did the elevator get fixed? I don't watch it regularly." Yeah, that that had that to be was, resolved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I barely watched this show, and as soon as you made that, I was like, "Oh, I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about." Everybody knows about the elevator. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. wasn't like anything. They didn't do anything yeah. crazy, but it was really fun. Yeah, and, and no uh, big, Buffy's it, in it. Yeah, I, I heard that. I Her heard. Yeah, was great. I heard Sarah Michelle Gellar was in it, and that's fun. Uh, they've had so many great cameos over the year, and I think that's a good nod to Buffy. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to watching with my wife. To say, I was going to watch it to try to cover it, and I thought, you know what? I don't care. We can talk about it. People can spoil it. I know enough about the show. Somebody could say something. Someone says the ending was perfect. Another oh, good. person says a good tearjerker. Uh, another person said there are no dragons on Game of Thrones. There were reens. Dragons have four legs and wings. Were reens have two legs and four uh, legs. It, it, it's it, wyvern. It's wyvern. I don't know. Oh, I'm wyvern, sorry. Wyvern. I didn't learn that word in school. Is it, it's not wyvern. It's wyvern. I've always heard wyvern. All right, I heard probably right. Wyverns. Wyverns. I yeah. kind of like that. Okay. Well, just some that you know. So why, why do they call the mother of wyverns? Okay. Because mother of dragons sounds cooler. Oh, okay. Very it go. does. There we go. Lovely. See, yeah, that's what you got. You got to love that about geeks. Well, do you? Yeah. yeah. Do you, you really, really got to. You really got to like, love the nitpicky geek that goes. Yeah, you're the smartest guy in the room. You don't understand. Thanks, thanks comic book guy. Yes, yeah. we also know that it's Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, exactly. Well, we got a messenger from a listener, and we because uh, we, we're, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna feed this troll with Mister Wervine. <laughs> a messenger from a listener that shared a great story about an odd thing his sister did in 1984 that she still likes to brag about. I'll tell you what this is at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Got this message from Henry. Hey, what's up, Henry? Hank. Hank. He says, BJ and Migs, we were giving my sister a hard time over the weekend. Because whenever we all get together, she somehow ends up mentioning that back in 1984, she was the roller disco champion. (laughs) I love that every time they get together, somehow it always comes up. I got to give her credit. I don't know how you could tactfully bring that into any situation. And somehow she makes it happen every time. Hey, guys, by the way. It's 35 years ago. I know. You know, it's like Uncle Rico. Oh, gosh, yeah, okay. It's, it's a okay, totally yeah, Uncle Rico yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you want to put her on the spot and say, let's go to a roller rink? I think there's still some roller rinks around. Oh, there's she a couple, probably, yeah. She probably would love that because she probably still could do some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, when this happened, Henry says, we all started sharing our own dumb claim to fame stories. And Henry says, I was once a star mathlete. <laughs> My brother-in-law won a Taekwondo tournament when he was 12. Nice. And he says, my favorite was that my wife once won a bubblegum bubble-blowing competition at a fair when she was a teen. 
That's why he married her. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, man. I think the skate, the the rower disco champ might be the best one of them all. Oh, you think so? I really Uh, think the bubble gum is, is pretty awesome. Yeah. That's not easy to do. But well, definitely the worst is his, Mathley. Yeah, I know. You never get any... Oh, you're yeah. hating on math, Steve. Yeah, but you just don't ever... You don't, you don't get the ladies by saying, I'm a mathlete. I mean, usually. Maybe nowadays you would. I don't know. But back then, in 1984, I don't think anybody mm-hmm. thought mathletes were sexy. Right. What would you rather be, a mathlete or a roller or disco champion? Um, I hate roller skating, so I'm going to have to go mathlete. Yeah. See, I want to be the taekwondo master. Now, I mean, the kid probably wasn't a master, but I, I, I'd like to be that guy. <laughs> Taekwondo's hard. I took three months of it. Three months? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, three months. That's yeah. like... He made the commitment, Danny. Two and a half months more than I would have thought you would have lasted. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think that's about how long uh, Joey D's lasted, too, with Taekwondo. Yeah, that's what about What belt it. did you end up on? Yellow? Uh, yeah. He got a mauve belt. Green? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I ended up uh, yeah, I ended up high yellow because the green test I had to learn uh, some Korean phrases and I couldn't do it. I gave up. <laughs> that was it. High yellow. Yep. That's nice. It's the lukewarm topic of the day. So based on the message we received, we want to know, what is your dumb claim to fame? Of course, we got some, but I'm sure we can share ours as well and want to hear from you. What is your dumb claim to fame? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We'll take your calls. We'll take your texts. After the offspring, Danny's happy. On the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Got a message from Henry asking us about our dumb claims to fame. Uh, and it's all based on the fact that his sister always likes to slip into any conversation uh, whenever they get together. She was the 1984 roller disco champion. And how about you? Because that is that is kind of a dumb claim to fame. It's a yeah. famous moment. Not really amazing, really, but still, okay. How about you? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Ah, the texts are coming in, BJ. I like this one. My, my claim to fame? I was on Evening Magazine, 1998 Sexiest Construction Worker, Paul in Tacoma. Oh, good job, Paul. Yeah. Awesome. Dang. Someone says I was the first Valor Victorian to graduate pregnant. Oh, that actually is a pretty amazing claim to fame. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be a valedictorian and be pregnant, that is exactly two ends of a spectrum. You would expect somebody who got pregnant in high school to not be a good student. That That's what they would tell you is, you know what, you're, you're not going to go anywhere in life. And, of course, the valedictorian would not get pregnant because they're focusing on their grades. And that she did both. I kind of want to hear that acceptance speech. Boy, she can multitask. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Study and bang. I mean, well, yeah, same time. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm, I'm very impressed. I wasn't by her. able to accomplish either when I was in school. <laughs> yeah, and I really thought you'd get pregnant. No, I, really I did, did too. Yeah. I mean, I look it. Yeah. Someone says I'm spelling bee champion of the second grade. Yeah. I, I never. I was always out in the first round. Me too. Whenever they would do it in school and they would try and start like the spelling bees, I was like not even last one round. Yeah. I got, by, I got by a round, maybe two, but then, but then when it really got serious, it was like, I knew I was. I, mean, I still have to rely on my phone to spell restaurant properly. Yeah. Oh, good job, buddy. I got screwed, and I'll never forget it. Calendar. Did you know that there's yeah. an A in calendar? Yes. yes. I do now. Good job, buddy. Yeah. I got screwed. Mine's even worse than that. I got screwed with very. I spelled it V-A-R-Y instead of V-E-R-Y. Good job. And I had asked for a definition, so it was wrong. Oh, oh man. You were very wrong. Yeah, very wrong. And, and by the way, Rev, just to help you, uh, there are two A's in calendar. Oh, crap, there that, is. Yeah, that's what you really meant. Because we all know there's at least one A. We know that calendar. We get Well, that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, now you understand. You and Danny, although, you, you guys are the guys. Yeah. In high school, I was known as the dancing kid. Ooh, yeah. The dancing, dancing kid. Dancing kid. The freshman year of high school, I really wanted to be in student senate. And they had us do like speeches, like campaign speeches. And I was like, well, the only way that I can make this myself last is to dance. Had so, you seen Napoleon Dynamite before or after this happened? Oh, this is way before. This okay, is good. Like early 2000. And so I just, I said, hi, I'm Danny. I want to be part of your Senate. Now I'm going to dance for you. And I threw on <laughs> this intermission music by The Offspring, and I just did this stupid dance. Oh, and man. so my whole freshman class knew me as the dancing kid, and there did I was. Did you make it? I did. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Congratulations. Do you think 
Now, I, I, I don't know where the director of Napoleon Dynamite is from, but do you think that, I mean, because I have never heard of this in my life. The only time, when he brought it up, the only time I thought anybody was dumb enough to like try to make an impression on someone to do a weird dance was Napoleon Dynamite. That was like a talent show from Napoleon Dynamite. That's what I'm saying, yeah. but do you think that the guy saw Danny going, this just weird kid thought, here's how I'm going to impress everybody to be in the Senate. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, someday I'm going to make a movie about this kind of weirdness. You just started dancing. You never, yeah, I did. How'd I you danced. do? I, I, I think... He made it. I made it. You got I don't in, know. Huh? I, I, everyone laughed at me, and it was fun. I mean, <laughs> was the goal to be laughed at? Yeah, I okay. mean, it was. It was a silly dance. Like okay. I just, I did everything that I possibly, I you know. I did the white boy dance of the, you know, oh, yeah, everything. That works yeah, good on the radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah somebody should. I, 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 hope that that, I hope the theater the theater people just immediately accepted you. Because yeah. like, yeah, he's, he's one of us. Let's get him on. He's got to do the plays. I think someone says, I was on a TV commercial with Governor Locke back in the seventh grade. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, this one's good for you, BJ. I was in a Magic the Gathering commercial. Whoa. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. And someone says, my roommate carved a seven-foot dong and got to meet BJ. How about that? Do you remember that? I kind of do, actually. I mean, we've had a lot of dongs come our way on the show. <laughs> but I think I do remember that guy. The worst was uh, third grade when I pooped my pants in class. Oh, oh that's yeah. a great... I love that. That's, that's yeah. And it didn't last long, thankfully, but I was a little... Uh, stinky pants, they call me. Little stinky pants, Steve. <laughs> Not little, but just stinky pants. Dude, that's a, that's a beat. How did you get out of that? I mean, I think that would have followed you everywhere. I know. You're right. I, I don't know why. I guess... I did a crazy dance to the offspring. And oh, that's what it was. Yeah. About me pooping my pants. <laughs> I think as I would have got older, I would have just started calling you SP. Yeah. You know, just because, all right, okay, you might, because you probably would have said stinky pants is horrible. Like, all right, no problem, SP. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, God. Yeah, in retrospect, that should have, I should have lived with that for the rest of my time. Yeah. Because, I mean, I got sent to the bathroom, my mom showed up. All of that. It was super embarrassing. But somehow I was able to avoid massive disaster from that. Yeah, that, you know, and yeah, because I know my I know my school. Forget about it. I would have been stinky pants for my whole life. Somebody was on had a review like this. So it was on Wheel of Fortune during the L.A. riots because no one else could make it in the studio. Wow, oh, damn. They probably did better than me. I'd like to buy an O. Yeah, they probably did. Mm. Yeah. Let's go to Tom and Renton. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. What is your dumb claim to fame? Tom, you are on the rock. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad, Tom. So how about you? So uh, I, uh, my, my sister was a big NSYNC fan, and, and uh, she entered in this contest, and she put my name in there, too, to better chances. And, and I won a uh, private concert and like this whole meet and greet thing with what? NSYNC. It'd be great if you didn't invite your sister to it. <laughs> well, I had, so I was just going to give her the tickets, but, but uh, whoever is the ticket holder ha- has to go and can bring a guest. Oh, that's so yeah. I yeah. had no choice. And, oh. and, and how, were, how was it? How was it for her, at least? Well, okay, so, so um, it actually was fun because it was sponsored by Twix, and they, had, they were just, like, giving stuff away, <laughs> like, tickets uh, to yeah. Great Adventure and stuff. Yeah. They had, like, these three-foot goblets full of Twix, and you could just take out whatever you wanted. Yes. It was, like, insane. How much? How annoyed would the members of NSYNC be like, look, we do this crazy concert, people are going nuts for it, and there's a guy who's more in, in, entertained by these Twix things yeah. than by our music. <laughs> That's so, amazing. So what's funny is there was like a bunch of other guys there whose sisters or you know significant <laughs> others had entered them in the contest. So it was probably ten of us or so that were just there and didn't weren't had didn't have anything to do with anything. See, that's why you always you know you you, you, you always got to give something a chance when you're going to anything because you just never know. Like I mean, yeah, that, that my that wife would have shanked awesome. you, Tom, for those tickets. I, yeah. I swear, like that's just like that's that's her band. Yeah. Oh, imagine the man, like, what a guy you would have been if you could have brought her to that. Right? Yeah. No. No, but that probably would have been illegal, right? Yeah, it would have been a little weird. Yeah. Being, with the age difference, the younger uh, we get, the weirder it would be, BJ. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Who's this? Why now? It's weird to think that, yeah, you could have taken if, her to, like, that's why future wife, she's no. five. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think like that. I know. That's really weird. Yeah. Well, that's what you get for, you know, dating high schoolers. <laughs> Never dated a high schooler. Yeah, even in high school. It feels like it. It just, I mean, she just, she just, you know, she's just so youthful. It's like it really was, yeah. But hey, let's move on. Oh, the jokes. Yeah. They don't stop. <laughs> they just don't stop. I got, what, I got one more year, right? Or did she already, is she already in her 30s? I can't yeah. remember. Oh, dang it. I missed my, I missed the window. It's gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, it doesn't work so much when somebody hits their 30s. That's like you're kind of an adult. But here you are still doing it. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Well, yeah. you're right. Can't you're give like it the up. Uncle Rico of bad jokes. I'm the Uncle That's my claim to fame. <laughs> there you go. The Uncle Rico of bad jokes. <laughs> 206 421 Rock. You can text us at 77999. <laughs> Joey D. Oh, Lulu. Oh, Lulu and Joey D. Lulu. Wow, how about that? Dude, I totally forgot about the Spelly Bee thing, dude. I earned a funny nickname. that uh, You guys just reminded me of it. Uh, we had a Spelly Bee in sixth grade, and they decided to hold the, like a, a competition, and it was at 8 in the morning, and I had the word rodeo, and I remember looking straight at my teacher, and I was like, R-O-D, look over to my friend, Y. <laughs> and he just said, R-O-D, Y. Rodeo, and I was like, oh. Darn. And so the whole class goes up, what's up, yo? And I got the, the nickname yo for like a week because I spelled rodeo with a Y-O yeah. as opposed to an E-O. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great way to spell rodeo, though. I'm going to actually do that. Man, your, your classmates are really stretching for a nickname. <laughs> I know, but it was great. What's I, up, I was, yo? It was a funny claim to fame that I forgot about. But my other one, though. Stinky least, Pants would have been better, don't you think, Steve? I think that would have been a yeah, better nickname. Pants, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I actually uh, am now the gift king in a lot of my group chats. <laughs> the gift king? Yeah. Do you reply to everything with gifts? Everything with yeah. gifts, man. I love doing it. <laughs> I try and, ca- I try and like, like limit the amount, but it's so much fun. Yeah, especially since like all your favorite shows have the little caption. There's always a great little moment like Always Sunny or Parks and Rec. My favorite is the South Park uh, cop gift that just says, Nice. <laughs> it's you know what I'm telling you. This is claim to fame. That's BJ. claim to fame. I know. I told you. Blood is on your hands. My son is delusional. I told you that right now. <laughs> what are you hoping to get out of this? Oh, I love it because you know you get these huge I group chats with like ten people and everyone has their opinion, right? And my opinion is always the only the gif and the gif is always like that, but, or like that uh, the dude that kind of has the weird eyes who go, like looks up and looks down, or the funny awkward Muppet meme that's like ooh. Uh, you know, ooh. It's, it, it, like the, the only one like right now on this show excited. About look, it's Vicky. The oh, rest well, of us no. are glazed. And a texter, thanks for the shout out, Joe from Doug Rody here. Hey, <laughs> okay. what's up, yo? Doug Rody, there you go. Damn. Well, I'm like, and it's funny because everyone in my group chats, they all compliment me on my meme game, and it's so bad still that doing I'm this. We're still right. talking about memes and gifts. Well, yeah. Yeah, I know, dude. I'm telling you, you and I, we, 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 it I, just misses us. We are, it, it's, it's over for us. This I, is when we know we're old. I went to a new therapist last week, and I was explaining a lot of things, and I pulled out my phone to show her memes to explain how I'm feeling and what are things going on. <laughs> really? I'm not kidding. Wow. Like, Did you pull out grumpy cat? No. Rest in peace. Oh, so, so it's so like hurting. So you're communicating in hieroglyphics. You predicted Basically. it two years ago. Yes. Yeah. You said that we're going to go back to hieroglyphics, and that's pretty this much is how it I means. feel. And there's a picture of that sad Brian guy. Well, well, no. That's uh, that. He's unlucky. He's not sad. Oh, I'm he's sorry. Just unlucky. I'm sorry. Bad Steve, luck you are Brian. so. Steve, you're done. I it's over up. for you. You're not yeah. on fleek with the he's gift like or in the meme game. Original like lineup of gifts or gifts memes, dude. Yeah. Get come with on, it. Steve. Speaking of just like group chat, man. I don't know what's up with my phone. I have a weird glitch on it. I'm stuck in an 18-person group chat that even though I clicked on hide alerts, I still get alerts on. And oh, it is no. punishing me. Oh. They do not stop talking. And I can't get out of it. I can't get out of it. Damn, dude. And I can't, I, I can't be that guy that's going to be like, hey, can you guys stop doing this? Because it's like that reply all, you know, how you fall down that awful yeah. Vicious cycle, so I just got to endure it. Oh man! Get everybody else to turn it off by start sending dong pics or something. Rev, uh, not not mine. <laughs> no, I was oh. going to say that's a great idea. Oh, great! Thanks. Now I know what I'm going to do during the break. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, during the break? <laughs> Could you imagine if that's how I just reply? And it's like, yeah, why not? Get the gift king to help you out. But I don't even know, like. 60% of these numbers on, on this, this group chat. How do you better. get into these things? Somebody sent a text out saying, hey, I have a new number, but sent it to like all of his oh, contacts. Oh, God. Oh, new number who dis. Person. Oh, That's no. the worst. That idiot. It's bad, dude. Jeez, no, you can't do that. You should literally just respond with boo. Like but over and over, just I just yeah. don't even want to get involved. That's in like it. not blind copying people on email. I mean, oh, that's just a worst. faux pas. You can't do that. Yeah, look, there's oh my god, look, eighteen at that. people, Whoa. and all those numbers I don't even know. Oh yeah, you don't have them in your phone as their name, so you don't know any I don't of those know, people. I don't know more than half of the people. Oh, and, you, and the phone and the phone is saying, "Sorry, Steve, you're going to be punished for the rest of your and life." They're all just texting something. Oh, Give the oh, phone yeah. to Vicky. Let her meme it out. Yeah, Ooh. and then maybe they'll I give up. I can send really inappropriate ones to make everyone uncomfortable and block you. 
See, that's the only thing is they know who he is. Yeah, they do. If it was if it was people that he didn't know, that's because I got I got involved in a group message one time with a bunch of people. They just it was like my old number or something, or like somebody had my old number, and so I just started sending inappropriate ones. I was like, "Hey, you guys want to hang out this weekend?" Blah blah blah. And then they finally were just like, "Oh, this guy's not supposed to." And they finally stopped texting. Remember when we did that though, and it was uh, another radio dude, and (laughs) and and you took a picture of me in my underwear and sent it off into the group chat, and it just so happened his mom was on that group chat. Nice. Yep, that happens. Ah! It made it onto the chive. Yeah. Because he screenshotted it and put it up somewhere. And it was yeah. just like, someone hit me up like, do you know you're on the chive right now on the front page? And I'm like, what? In your underwear? I'm like, how? Yeah, there you go, buddy. <laughs> and then awesome. I look at it, I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, that's your claim to fame. Why didn't you, that's your, your you were on chive in yeah, your underwear. Right? That's, that's a super claim nice. to fame. I was also on, um, what the hell was that? Remember when they had that that dog that looked like a human? Oh, right. And there was somebody who photoshopped my face on a dog? Yeah. Yeah, dude, that, yeah, if you've ever seen the dog that looks like a human, that is actually Steve. It was on, like, Dateline or something like that. <laughs> and it's been everywhere. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. Dude, it's amazing that it's been everywhere, and that's you. <laughs> that somebody did that with your face, and you're the... So Good you, job. You've got some claims to fame that I think are Embarrassing legit. Embarrassing claim to fame. Yeah. It's still legit, though. I mean, stinky pants made good. Thank you. Yeah, good job, buddy. They knew then. But see, people knew then. It's like, oh, the kid that basically dumped himself, oh, he's going to be something. Stinky pants made good. Stinky (laughs) pants made good. I like one time says, just get a new phone number. Yeah, 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 that'd be great. Yeah. And then I'll group chat everybody. Yeah, okay. Hey, a new number. I have a question. How is it possible that a man woke up only to find out that his junk was missing? I'm going to tell you at 747. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, if you're upside down in your mortgage, should you continue to make the payment? Continuing to pay your mortgage or not is a complex decision because you're going to have to pay to live somewhere. You're going to have a housing payment. So continuing to make your house payment really depends on several factors. One is whether or not you have a second mortgage. Um, The second one is how affordable your ongoing monthly mortgage payment is. Uh, Another uh, issue is whether your mortgage is adjustable and you're facing an increase in your mortgage payments later on when interest rates go up. If you do have a second mortgage in this economy with the housing prices being down, oftentimes we can can take off or strip off that second mortgage in a Chapter 13 case so that you'd only have the first mortgage to continue to pay. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. And thanks for listening.